So the baseball season is over. The Washington Nationals have won the world championship. Uh, free agency is about to begin, which also means it is time for the Baseball Hall of Fame season to begin. This past week, the Baseball Hall of Fame announced the finalists in two different categories, and I'm going to talk about both of them right now. The first one is the Ford C. Frick Award, and this is presented uh, to an individual annually for excellence in broadcasting. This is from the National Baseball Hall of Fame. This year there are eight finalists, and the finalists are Joe Castiglione, Jacques Duquet, Tom Hamilton, Ken Harrelson, Pat Hughes, Ned Martin, Mike Shannon, and Dwayne Statz. The announcement of the recipient of this award will be on December 11th during the Baseball Winter Meetings in San Diego and will be honored during the awards presentation at the Hall of Fame Weekend 2020 in Cooperstown that date, July 25th. Uh, good luck to all eight of those men. Uh, a huge honor, first off, to get nominated into this into, as a finalist. Uh, we'll have to see who wins that. Uh, December the 11th, like I mentioned, is the date that they will announce the recipient of the Ford C. Frick Award. Now, yesterday, the Modern Baseball Era Committee announced their finalists for nomination into Cooperstown for the Baseball Hall of Fame. In total, nine former players and one executive make up this list of potential Hall of Famers. The candidates, with the exception of one, um, all were major league players. One of them was the head of the Players Association from 1966 to 1982. Um, to get in, it's basically the same as if they were on the writer's ballot. They need to get 75% of the votes. So, there are 16 members of the Modern Baseball Era Committee. They need to get 12 votes to get into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Um, so let's take a look at the nominees, the or the finalists that are represent or that that's up for consideration for the whole. I, I'm excited. I love this time of the year. I really do. First off, we have Dwight Evans, who spent 19 of his 20 years as a Boston Red Sox. Very good times. You also have Steve Garvey, who spent a lot of his time with the Los Angeles Dodgers. You have Tommy John, who pitched 26 seasons in the major leagues for six different teams. You have Don Mattingly, who is a lifer of the New York Yankees. He spent all 14 seasons playing for the New York Yankees. Then you have Marvin Miller, who was the head of the Players Association, from 1966 to 1982, uh, and because of that, well, we'll get, I'll get into what he did in a moment. You also have Thurman Munson, who played all 11 seasons for the New York Yankees. You have Dale Murphy, who played 18 seasons in the major leagues for the Braves, Phillies, and Rockies. Dave Parker, who played for six teams over his 19-year career. Ted Simmons, who played 21 seasons for the Cardinals, Brewers, and Braves, and Lou Whitaker, who spent his entire 19-year career with the Detroit Tigers. I, I'll tell you, this committee is going to have a very, very hard time, uh, I think, picking anyone to get into the Hall of Fame. Uh, this is a very good group. I'm not saying that this isn't a group that, you know, it's like, it's not a bad group. This is actually a really talented group. You've got players who have won MVPs, won world championships. 
But the one name that really interests me the most is Marvin Miller. And I'd, I'd honestly never heard of him until his nomination came up. And this is such a very interesting story. Um, I'm going to read the brief bio that describes Marvin Miller. This is from the Baseball Hall of Fame website. Marvin Miller was elected as the head of the Major League Baseball Players Association in 1966 and quickly turned the union into a powerhouse. Within a decade, Miller had secured free agency for the players via the arbitration process when Dave McNally and Andy Messersmith played out their contracts following the 1975 season. By the time Miller retired in 1982, the average player's salary was approximately 10 times what it was when he took over. So he did a lot for the Players Association, did a lot for the union, for the Players Union. So, um, Right off the bat, for me, there's three names that just strike out at me and that make me think, they're going to get voted in. There's three. I think it's Tommy John, Don Mattingly, and Thurman Munson. Now, does that necessarily mean that they're going to get in? No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that whatsoever. I mean, this committee, this is a very interesting committee because I, I know last year, when I first did this kind of video, it was about the today's game committee and how you know if I had the vote I'm not gonna do that in this video but I will do it in another video in the near future probably closer to the December 8th deadline which is the day that they're gonna announce if anybody gets elected into the Hall of Fame from this committee but you're talking about really really good players and a very, very good uh, m mind of the business, the, of the business side of baseball with Marvin Miller. So to, basic, to, to basically give you guys an, uh, an explanation of this. So this year it is the modern baseball era that is up for consideration for the Hall of Fame. Whoever gets in is going to go in for the class of 2020. The next time the Modern Baseball Committee meets is going to be in 2022 when they'll figure out the class of 2023. What is interesting is next year, because next year we're going to get two committees. We're going to get the Golden Days Committee, which is 1950 to 1969, and the Early Baseball Committee, which is basically from the beginning all the way to 1950. And the Today's Game Committee won't meet up again until 2021. So for the players that are living, that are alive, that are considered for this award, or to be considered for the Hall of Fame, if they don't get in, they got to wait three years to, uh, to to go through this process again. So, um, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a video in a, in, in a few weeks. I'm gonna give this some time. I'm gonna give myself some time to think, do some research, and I will do a video. I'd say roughly about three four weeks from now, where. I'm going to tell you guys who I would vote for if I had a spot on this committee to go into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Very interesting group of ten. Uh, I, I will be very interested to see if any of them get in, especially with this being the year that Derek Jeter is now up for eligibility for Cooperstown, because we know Jeter's getting in on the first ballot. It's going to be interesting to see if this is a Yankees-filled Hall of Fame weekend or if it's just going to be Jeter. So have to wait and see. Who do you think from this group of 10 should go into the Baseball Hall of Fame this year? Leave a comment in the comment section below, and I will talk to you guys 
next time with my ballot who I would vote for for the Baseball Hall of Fame.